नो मैम दे विल बी ऑन यूट्यूब मैम अच्छा वी आर लाइव नो मैम आई रिक्वेस्ट यू परमिशन टू स्टार्ट विद द सेशन मैम श्योर श्योर Arivom everyone a warm and heartfelt welcome to the 16th session of higher anatomy a lecture series designed exclusively for the first year bms students we are delighted to have you all here today but before we embark on this enlightening journey let me take a quick moment to introduce you to jignyasa a pan india platform driven by the student community of bharata within the aish fraternity our motto is simple yet powerful learn aish to practice aish we strive to empower aish students from campuses to communities bridging the gap between students policy makers and administrative authorities jignyasa serves as a unifying force connecting every aspect of aish including students academicians practitioners scientists industrialists and hospitals all under one inclusive umbrella we firmly believe in thinking globally while acting locally working tirelessly over the past two decades to strengthen the aish education system and instill confidence among aish students to achieve our goals jignyasa has undertaken various impactful initiatives across the country ranging from grassroots to international platforms some of our key initiatives include study circles lecture series pre medical camps social health status surveys hands on training workshops conferences interaction with eminent vaidyas brainstorming sessions national arogya expo and international conference national level seminars medicinal plants visits pharmaceutical visits agitations for i students community advocating for the rights and demands of i students private internship programs interaction with traditional healers online mock tests social awareness campaigns free healthcare assistance during natural calamities and accidents through local governing bodies <laughs> and many more yesterday in our session Uh, it was a testament to the overwhelming response and enthusiasm from students with over 500 live participants and more than 11000 views we are humbled by uh, our active en- by your active engagement and dedication to learning at jignesa we understand the financial challenges that many students face when it comes to assessing commercial study platforms we firmly believe that our education should be accessible to all regardless of their financial constraints hence we are committed to providing a helping hand to every student fueled by the burning desire to learn with the support of experts in the field we offer you the opportunity to learn with no financial burden and all we ask for is your unwavering interest and passion for knowledge today we are honored to have dr deepthi ji godbale bms ms associate professor rachna sharya sdm institute of ayurveda and hospital ma'am has completed her ug in ashwini ayurvedic medical college davangere and as pg and her pg is also from the same college ashwini ayurvedic medical college davangere ma'am has attended many national and international conferences webinars and presented papers and posters too ma'am has preserved more than 100 specimens in our anatomy museum ma'am has performed three embalming till date and also own mummifications ma'am has spread awareness on voluntary dead body donation ma'am has delivered series of guest talks on various mamas on facebook as live session under adf platform ma'am has also delivered guest talks on ed- epidemic diseases bph kalasheri ra in district aish offices at ramnagar davangere ma'am has delivered guest talk on clinical anatomy of hair and skin pcos in an international webinar in 2021 on adf platform ma'am was felicitated and bestowed with best teachers award on account of teachers day by aish darpan foundation ma'am has published an article on the topic entitled a variation in the formation of the portal vein in international ayurvedic medical medicine medical journal in december 2018 ma'am we extend our warmest welcome to you and to each and everyone present here ma'am i, requ- I request you to start with uh, carry forward with the session from now on yeah thank you karthik so much to introduce me onto this jignasa platform am i audible karthik am i audible yes ma'am you are audible you are audible ma'am can we begin the session then can we begin the session then hello hello ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am can we begin is the screen is my screen visible ma'am yeah it's visible i am not able to see the slides yet uh, no ma'am yeah yes ma'am can i make it full screen that would be better ma'am yeah 
Yes, ma'am. Fine. So let's. Uh, my topic that was that has been given to me is on presenting the overview of uh, on Marma Sharira. So this platform is mainly based on uh, resolving the problems of the students. Like since they are going to have a new format for first year BM students, so we are we are asked to um, deliver a series of lectures on um, different topics and to. Uh, understand them like the probable questions that might be asked in the exams so when we come to this topic marma sharira this is a very huge topic actually a very vast topic and maybe the reason they have given this in the um, ncism norms like it may come for 10 marks and uh, more than the marks they have included this marma sharira topic so in uh, all the aspects like in it can be asked in the form of mcqs it can be asked in the form of LAQs or it can be asked in the form of uh, SAQs. So in all the three different aspects, this question can be asked from the topic Marma Sharira. So actually a topic to be focused. So let's stick on to that. So from your perspective, from students' perspective, like what are the probable questions that you might get from this topic? So without wasting much time, let's begin with the topic. So Marma Sharira, as we all know this word, Marma. Okay, so marma means varmam, marmam. So they are all the words which tell us that they are the vital points in our body. So there are certain vital points in our body in different regions of our body which are important to be preserved. So why is it important? Because it is important because jiva sthanam tu marmasyat. Because there is something known as jiva in every marma that is there in our body. So jiva is there in every marma. So jiva sthanam tu. Marma syat is what they have told us the nirukti or the uh, definition of the marma. It is the seat for jiva. Other than that, marmani jiva adharani prayena munayoho jaguhu. So munis means the acharyas, munis, they also accepted that. So it is the jiva sthana. The marmas are the jiva sthanas uh, of this. So totally we have 107 marmas in our body. And according to Yoga Shastra and Siddha, they say there are 108 marmas. So next definition is Tesham Anyatamam Pidayam Samadhika Pida Bhavati Cheta Nibandha Vaisheshyat. So Pidayam, whenever there is an injury to the marmasthana or different types of any type of marma in our body, then it leads to a lot of pida or Vedana, Tivra Vedana. So a lot of pain in our body. Samadhika Pida. Samadhika means it's not just a normal or a usual pain. So there is a lot of pain, severe pain pain that is felt on the marmasthana when there is injury to that marma pradesha. So that is one the importance that they tell in this. Maha prana tasya gruham marma. So they have used the word here as gruham. So the context of using this gruham word here is they say that the residence of prana, the house of prana is nothing but the marma again. That's why the word has come there as gruham marma. Okay. Then vishamam spandanam yatra pidyate rukcha marmam tat. So on pressing the marma sites, so there can be um, deep pain that can be felt on the marma points. So spandanam is like when we are palpating that particular marmasthana, there can be a, a pain that is actually felt when there is an injury to that site. So other than this, marana karitvat marma mare enti tite marmani. So this is interpreted in very uh, in different forms. So mare enti tite marmani. The word definition of this is mare enti tite means if there is an again any injury to the marmasthana, it can be fatal or it can lead to death also. So that means to say, so it it should not be interpreted, interpreted in such a way that so any marma is injured, it leads to instantaneous death. So that is the wrong interpretation. It should not be taken in the, that way. So it is like it is that word is telling you or that paribhasha nirukti is telling you that how can what can be the extent of injury to the marma? So injury to the marma can be to that extent that sometimes it can be even fatal. So apart from being fatal, there are also some set of marmas which when on injured, that can cause different vikalpatas also, that can cause different deformities. There are also some set of marmas which on injury can cause tivra vedana or severe uh, pain also. Okay, so that is that is how we have to interpret the smara and titi ti marmani. Not just saying that any marma, when it's injured, can be can lead to death. That is not the thing like that. So marana karitvat marma. 
so that is also the same meaning there is no difference in the meaning it just narrated by different authors so then they then they come to the composition of this they have also used the word as dukha daitvat marmam so dukha and uh, peeda is almost the same so misery misery is equal to that of the death that is what they say here so that which gives dukha or vedana when it is injured then that will be no lesser than the death okay so these are some niruktis that you have to remember when they ask in the exams so suppose they let them ask saq or let them ask laq whatever may be the pattern so always we have to begin the answer by starting with that snerukti and paribhasha so these are the set of definitions that you can highlight in your exams next the heading you can write is you can start with the composition like what are what all are there surrounding the marmas so for example the shloka goes as marmani mamsa sira snayu asthi sandhi sannipataha teshu swabhavatah evam visheshena prana stishthanti pranaha tishthanti so they say that there is mam association of mamsa sira snayu asthi sandhi okay all these are associated in and around the marmasthana okay there is association of the muscle tissue there is association of different arteries and veins or the blood vessels there is association of different kinds of ligaments and tendons there is association of different bones there is also even association of different joints in and around any marmasthana for that matter so that is what they highlight in the shloka teshu swabhavatah evam visheshena so naturally when we are saying this any marmasthana by its nature there is prana within that okay visheshana prana so what is the visheshata is prana is there is situated in this region okay so that is what you have to remember when it comes to the components of the marma then after that they say tat punah mamsa sira snayu asti sandhi sannipatah bahulyena tu nirdesh tasmat mamsani aashrayato marmani so there is no much difference again in the definition again ashtangakara says there are again these five components which are making them which are there in and around the marmasthana so this words if you are remembering then it is good after this we have the next introduction as so you know this these are named as the vital points in our body in the word marma mru means to kill so to kill means that is the last I means the heights where it can be even fatal sometimes if it is not treated in the right time okay then it plays an important role especially in the field of surgery or in the field of shalya shastra and hence we call this marma sthana or the marma marma sharira as shalya vishara vishayardha vishayardha means half of surgery goes in learning about the marmas itself so the thorough knowledge you are having in the marma so you are no there is no doubt that you you are a good surgeon so shalya vishar vishaya ardha so that is what they highlight the word here this can even be correlated with acupressure or acupuncture so you are familiar with these different um, words where they say that pressure points there are pressure points which are vital in nature so that also we have seen lot of treatments uh, with this techniques acupressure and acupuncture so nearly we can take this marma chikitsa for acupressure or acupuncture they are also defined as the critical points of the body associated with different organs and nerves okay associated with different organs and nerves so any anything can be a part of this marma sthana there can be it can be in the form of different organs it can be in the form of different blood vessels or even the nerves for that matter okay then we have now the upcoming chikitsa what we call as marma chikitsa so this is one of the very blooming uh, this one in this non invasive technique where we are going to study um, where we are going to start this marma chikitsa it's non invasive and it's very easy so in simple words in one line if i have to tell about this marma chikitsa it is just like stimulating the marma points whenever there is any injury to that marma site or maybe a simple osteoarthritis maybe a frozen shoulder any case of for that matter so if we are or normally we take the medicines we do different treatments etc along with that if you are going to do the marma chikitsa stimulating the uh, marma points which are coming in the region of the shoulder joint so if we are doing so then that is also a relief that the patient gets by performing this marma chikitsa nowadays lot of people are um, doing this marma chikitsa as a part of this uh, concept so after this let's come to the numbers or the enumeration 
So number is said in the shloka as Saptotaram Marmashatam. Okay, Saptotaram Marmashatam. We have 107 marmas in our human body. Okay, then the division of the marmas. How are they divided then? 107 marmas. They are divided as Tani Marmani Panchatmakani Bhavanti Tadyatha. So they are divided into five sectors. So five sectors are in the form of Mamsa Marmani, Sira Marmani, Snayu Marmani, Asthi Marmani, Sandhi Marmani, Cheti. So these are the five sectors where we divide the marmas, in the, the way we divide the marmas. So they can present in the form of Mamsa Marmas, they can present in the form of Sira Marmas, they can present in the form of Snayu Marmas, Asthi Marmas, or even as Sandhi Marmas. So that is what is the understanding of that shloka. After this, again, they go on explaining you the enumeration of this. So first enumeration is how many marmas are there in the body? 107. So they may get, you may get the MCQs in different numbers. 107, 100, 108, 99, anything of like that kind. Just to test you that do you know the numbers or not. That is also a question that can come as MCQ. Apart from that, now next enumeration I am talking is about the uh, individual enumeration of each marma. For example, we are talking about mamsa marma means tatra ekadasha mamsa marmani. Ekadasha is 11. So ekadasha is 11 in number. So 11 are mamsa marmani. Eka chatvaramshat sira marmani. 41. Sira marmas are 41 in number. Then sapta vimshati is snayu marmani. Snayu marmanis are 27 in number. Ashtavasti marmani. Asthi marmani. So 8 are asthi marmas. Vimshati hi Sandhi Marmas. 20 are Sandhi Marmas. So this is the individual enumeration of each Marmas. So when you count all these totally, you will get 107 Marmas. So here also MCQ can come. Mamsa Marmas are dash in number. 10, 11, 12, 13, etc. Like that. They may ask you the number. Sira Marmas are dash in number. 41, 42, 40, 39, something like that. So individually also you must know the enumeration. So this shloka will help you to remember the uh, enumeration of individual marmas. So after that, we have again the classification. So you can see here different types of marmas that is there. So you are familiar with this. I'm not going into detail about each marma because one and a half years is a sufficient time where you would have learned about these marmas. But this is the picture. You can keep it for the reference just to know which marma is present in which site. So if you are imbibing these this diagram in your mind, then easily you can write any kind of any type of marma even they ask you in the exam so when they if they ask you about lohitaksha marma if you know about the location of the lohitaksha marma from this diagram uh, automatically you will start remembering uh, once you remember the site see the site there so automatically uh, you will start remembering what are the structures coming there okay and what type of marma it is so first thing you have to always do in marma shastra or marma sharira is so this diagram you have to keep it in mind and you have to remember this. You have to imbibe in your mind where are the different sites of marma location. So once you are thorough with this, the automatically the other things will run. So these are the marmas which are there from the frontal perspective. These are the marmas which are there from back side or the posterior aspect, the left side diagram. And individually, when they ask you the marmas, for example, let's consider uh, consider an uh, SAQ question, short answer question. If they may ask you only the marmas related with the head, shiras, okay. So then you can show the above diagram where it is showing the Adipati marma, Simantaka marma, right? So if they are asking the um, marmas related with the face, okay, then you can show the below diagram. So in the face, which all diagram we get? Sthapani, we get it in the point where this glabella, Shringataka marma is there, Fana marma is there, Manyadhamani marma is there. So these are the set of marmas that come in the face region. So when they're asking you individually, like uh, depending on each sector, then you can show that respective sector only and mark the marmas which are coming there. So you can just make a diagram even like this. Okay, if they're asking you only about the Urdhva Shakagata, Urdhva Shakagata means those which are concerned with the upper limbs. So you can just show the diagrams of the upper limb and mark the marmas on either sides. Similarly, Adho Shakagata, if they're asking, so just present the diagram only of the lower limb and just mark the marma points which are coming in the lower limb. So like that, you can divide yourself into different sectors and show the respective marmas like that. So you can take the reference of any of these diagrams, but end of the day, you have to know where these marmas come. 
okay this is the general diagram that you draw even in your records as well as in your exams so but i uh, once one time specifying is when they are specifying you trimmer mass then show only the trimmer mass when they are specifying you adho shaka gata marmas then please uh, focus only on the adho shaka gata marma even if you show only that diagram also it is enough okay if they are uh, asking you about the trunk region so marmas located in the trunk region or prushta gata marmas concentrate or draw only the marmas related with the prushta so here also i have shown another example so like this uh, kshitra marma talarudaya marma kurcha kurcha sira mani bandha these are the five marmas principally that are coming in the region of the hand or in the palmar aspect same re- if they are asking you in the plantar aspect just show the diagram of the marmas which are coming in the plantar aspect so same marmas you can show even in the plantar aspect also so this is how you have to cut things and um, uh, divide it into respective sectors and save your time so this is region wise marmas again like this okay so i have shown the marmas or same marmas in the plantar aspect so one i have shown from the dorsum of the foot another i have shown is from the plantar aspect of the foot so same marmas can be marked on both the aspects on the dorsum aspect as well as on the plantar aspects so here on the other side when you see from the left side diagram here the marmas that are there kurpara marma indravasti marma manibandha kurcha sira these are all the marmas which are coming in your the region of your upper extremities on that side so upper extremity means from the arm till the um, hand you have to show all the marmas which is so on one side if you are showing like this in the diagram that is more than sufficient okay after this you can go for the explanation of this and then the question can come define marma and classify marma as an saq then you have to write like this what are the different ways of classifying we can classify the marmas based on the structures so what we call it as rachana anusara for example they can be classified as sira marma snayu marma just now we read the shloka of that so that will come under the heading of rachana anusara then we have Uh, prognostic criteria so depending on the sadhya sadhyata or else aghata parinama anusara so what kind of um, impact will be there what kind of after effect will be there after the marma gets injured so depending on that we can classify the marma so example they have given is vaikalyakara marma so this is one there are vaikalyakara marmas so which are going to be hampered if there is any um, injury to the vaikalyakara marmas then it leads to vikalata or the vikalpata that means different deformities so like that this is the second way of classifying next we have is shadanga anusara so we are quite familiar with our shadangas and i'll tell you this is the best method of even answering in your examples so shadangas we will be knowing isn't it upper limb lower limb head trunk and head and neck thorax so all these shadangas it is always best to write in the form of shadanga so that you will not miss the names there actually so urdhva shaka gata adho shaka gata or prushta gata like this you have to mention the names and then we also have the division parinama anusara depending on angulas some ang- some uh, marmas are uh, having one angula some are having two angulas some are having three angulas some are having ardha angulas isn't it like this we have different parinamas so depending on that we call them as parinama anusara next we have sankhya anusara means based on individual enumeration isn't so based on individual enumeration so rudaya marma is only one isn't it basti marma is two when we come to urvi talarudaya all these we call it as 2 plus 2 four marmas so individually when you are writing down the numbers or of each marma then we call it as numerical or sankhya anusara classification then guna anusara guna anusara is based on the um, pancha bhautika configuration so for example we have saumyana marmas we have agneya marmas so for example if you are taking sadyo prana hara marmas then that will come under the heading of agneya marmas okay uh, heading in the sense the composition of uh, sadyo prana hara is it is agneya in nature so depending on this criteria also we can classify this so like this if you can make the tables that is well and good and always remember one thing in marma sharira so this is one such topic where you can give maximum number of importance in, for the tables so always present your answers in the form of maximum flow charts tables so tables is a better form because here all we have is uh, like so i have presented in the slides also here 
for example so so many tables are seen here this is the best way of presenting so it is very clear as well as it will save a lot of time for you in the exams so whenever in anatomy you are representing schematically or with diagrams or with flow charts or tables that is the best way of presentation in this subject anatomy subject so this is one such topic where you just have to use the tables for example you can see here how this slide is showing you anatomical consideration property based and sites based so just do this that will save a lot of time for you we don't need the english grammar anything in the subject as such okay so like this we can come up with different tables trimarma they are asking you so go for the table like this first you show the table table in the sense first you represent schematically like this then you can go with the uh nirukti and then with the explanation seeing the marks as such so like this always you have the idea of making the tables so special features anything let let it be any heading for the marma sankhya it may be it may be classification it may be vidya lakshanas whatever it may be the heading irrespective of the heading see always you do it in the form of different uh, headings um, different tables like this okay and after this so this is the first idea that should come to your mind like how you are presenting see here like this you are presenting so next slide so in the consecutive slides okay we have shaka gata udara gata ursha gata all these marmas so which are presented in the form of tables you present like this so to avoid <coughs> wastage of your time so once you have this <coughs> overall ideology now let us uh, briefly discuss like how you have to answer when uh, as a structure if it is asked like in a group if it is asked marmas then how you have to answer those questions so they can ask you when they ask you about the composition and the structure of the marma you can answer as soma maru tatejam si rajah satvam tamam sicha marma su prayashah pumsam bhutatma cha avakishthate so what does this tell the shloka tells you that marmas will contain uh, soma maru tatejam si soma is kapha guna and maruta is vayu or vata teja is pitta guna so these three are doshas so tri doshas which are there in this along with that there are also trigunas trigunas in the form of sattva rajas and tamas so all these are the com uh, things or composition which are coming under the heading of composition of the marmas along with that there is also bhutatma so atma along with the bhupancha mahabhutas so we call it as bhutatma so that is also associated with the heading of composition of the marma so all this this shloka you can include under the heading of composition of the marmas so uh, after this they go on explaining the effects of the marmas if they are asking you the effects or the pancha bhautika composition again then for example you can go on telling one by one marmas so we read that on the structural classification there is sadhya pranahara marma so tat tatra sadhya pranaharani sapta ratra abhyantaram marayanti so this is easy to remember sadhya prana sapta ratran means so within seven days abhyantaran within seven days if not treated then it can become fatal to one's life okay so this will tell you about the duration uh, duration of the sadhya prana hara marma similarly we have um, satra sadhya prana hara agneyani so this will talk about the agneyan is it is talking about the composition there so which mahabhuta is predominant agneya is predominant so next marma is kalantara let's go in the same order so kalantara for example if we are taking so 33 kalantara pranahara marmas are there so what is the word used there trayastrimshit so one more suggestion i would like to give in this regard is so uh, when you are writing 33 44 these numbers it's okay to write when you are presenting in the table as such that's okay but it's also good to write if you are knowing the shabdas like chatush chatvaram shatas 44 okay especially when you are writing the shlokas tres trimshat is 33 okay ekona vimshat is 19 always it is good to know these uh, uh, numbers in sanskrit especially when you it comes to shlokas so try to learn these things so kalantara prana harani saumya agneyani that means kalantara any kalantara prana hara marmas will they have the composition of saumya and agneya gunas okay so this is talking about again panchamahadev bhautika combination so what is the effect of this what is the effect of kalantara kalantara pranaharani pakshan masadva so if the, there is delayed <clears throat> there is postponement of the death so up to what extent up to pakshat means up to 15 days or masat okay up to 15 days or maximum up to one month there can be a 
postponement in the death. So little delayed than the Sadhya Pranahara Marmas. So like this, they are just two, two words which you can remember. So that will actually help you to fetch good marks. And even it's easy to remember also when you're remembering in uh, shloka form in Sankshipta, this one. So next is Vishalya Gnamarma. We are following the same pattern. So Vishalya Pranaharani Vayavyani. So any Vishalya Gnamarma, three Vishalya Gnamarmas are there. So they are all composed of Vayu Mahabhuta. So one more speciality about Vishalyagna Marma, whenever this word comes, the next thing that has to come into your mind is any impaction of the foreign body should not be removed directly in this, isn't it? So foreign body, as soon as if you if you are remo removing the foreign body just like that, then the Vayu is expelled out and immediately the death will follow. So because of this reason, so you have to, you must not remove this foreign body in this case. So this is the importance of Vishalyagna Marma that has to come to your mind immediately so they say that next marma is vaikalya karani vaikalya karani saumyani so this all the 44 vaikalya kara marmas are having the saumya mahabhuta as their composition or the association here so they are again 44 in numbers so again for that it's better you learn the shlokas or else again you have to form the mnemonics actually forming the mnemonics for marmas is really not easy rather if you learn three line shloka that would actually help you in a better way to remember systematically so that is one thing last set of marmas is rujakara marmas so word itself will tell rujakara means that which gives lot of ruja or vedana or dukkha to your body when it is affected or afflicted so rujakaranyan agni vayu guna bhuishtani so ruja means vedana vedana always goes in favor of vata dosha right so vayu guna has to be there so vayu guna bhuishtani so along with vayu the other maha, uh, other uh, doshas also can be associated with rujakaramarmas is what they are telling so vishesha tashchatau rujakaro so visheshata of this rujakaramarma is to give uh, tivra ruja in this case Okay, so again, Ruja Karani Marmani, Kshatani Vividaha Rujaha. Kshata means when there is an injury to the set of Ruja Karamarmas or any of the particular Ruja Karamarma, then it can be, uh, presentation can be in the form of different sets of different types of pain. Vividaha Rujaha, different types of pain, uh, sets of pain, it can show in the form of. So after this, so as I am showing you in the slides, so please go for these um, tables. So for the better understanding, so if you can change the slides, show them the tables so that they can have the idea how to present their answers. And when once we learn this uh, classification, so in classification, most of the times they ask only our Sushruta's classification. So other than our Sushruta classification, what else can come? So what else can come other than Sushruta's classification is one that can be expected is Dhamani Marma, right? Dhamani Marma, are totally nine in number. They are nine in number and these Dhamani Marmas are exclusively told by Vagbhata. So if you remember this Visheshata, it is enough. So you know Mamsa Marma, Siras, Nayu, Asti, Sandhi Marma. So along this, as an add-on, you remember Dhamani Marma, exclusively told by Vagbhata and they are totally nine in number. So that is what you have to remember. So that may be asked in MCQs. Dhamani Marma has been told by Charaka, Sushruta, Vagbhata, Harita like that or else dhamani marmas are dash in number okay 9 10 11 12 etc like that there you may expect the question in this way so something that is unique that needs to be remembered for mcqs always something which is pinpointed will be only asked for the mcqs so you can enlist this um, um, dhamani marmas like guda marma vidhura marma apasthamba and shringataka marma like this you can find the different types here after that Try to remember the uh, shlokas for the uh, Sadhya Pranahara, these shlokas. They are really not difficult to be by heart. They are very easy. Okay. So try to by heart these shlokas because as I said, like remember the mnemonics is very difficult in this Marma Sharira. So for example, if I am telling you about Sadhya Pranahara Marmas, so Shrunga Takan Adipati, Shankhau Kanta Sira Gudam, Ridayam Vasti Nabhicha, Gnanti Sadhyo Hatanitu. So this is really easy. There is nothing. It's rhythmic also. And Sushruta shlokas are really easy to by heart. 
ओके सो दे आर रिदमिक आराम से यू कैन लर्न देम सो श्रृंगा टका मीन्स श्रृंगा टका मर्मास दे आर फोर एंड नंबर अधिपति मीन्स इट इज ओनली वन एंड नंबर शंख सी द वर्ड श्रिंग शंख इट इज द्विवचन सो इट इज टू एंड नंबर कंठ सिरा दे आर एट एंड नंबर गुदम इज ओनली वन हृदय इज वन वस्ति वन नाभि वन ओके सो लास्ट दे आगे बंदा आफ्टर इफेक्ट ऑफ दैट चग घनति सद्दो हतानी तो इफ देयर इज एनी इंजरीज देन कैन लीड टू द instantaneous death in this case sadyo hatani immediate death can occur in this case or ma- maximum up to a period of satta ratran abhyantaram 7 days okay so you have to remember this shloka so if you are remembering the shloka automatically it's as good as remembering the 19 marmas 19 sadyo pranahara marmas so when you add this the number comes to as ekona vimshati or 19 and number similarly You have to learn for Kalan Tara Pranahara. So Vakshom Marmani, Seemanta Tala Kshipra, uh, Kshipra Indra Vastavaya, Katika Tarune Sandho Parshvajo Bruhati Chaya, Nitamba Viti Chaitani, Kalan Tara Pranahara Ani Tu. So actually it goes very easy. So you can learn this again and just enlist. Rohita is doing number, Apalapa is doing number, Apastamba is doing number. So like that you can go in, go on enlisting. So when you count this, they will get it as thirty-three in number. So really, they are not difficult to be uh, for by hearting the things. So Vishalyagna Marma is commonly asked. Sadhya Prana Har Marma is also very commonly asked. So Vishalyagna also you can learn most important and most easiest shloka. Utkshepa Sthapanishchayva. विशल्यघ्नानि निर्देशेत देयर आर ओनली 3 मर्म 3 विशल्यघ्न मर्मस 2 उत्क्षेप मर्मस एंड 1 स्थपनी मर्म सो योर ग्लोबेला पॉइंट इज द स्थपनी मर्म साइट ऑफ स्थपनी मर्म सो एंड देन आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट दैट दैट वन रिमूवल ऑफ द फॉरेन बॉडी दैट शुड नॉट बी देन देन यू कैन राइट द पंचम अबुत कॉन्फिगरेशन ऑफ दिस विशल्यघ्न मर्म एंड दैट्स हाउ यू कैन कंप्लीट इट फॉर 5 मार्क्स व्हेन दे आस्क यू फॉर 5 मार्क्स लाइक दैट और एज अ एसएक्यू लाइक दैट सो विशल्यघ्न ऑफन इट इज आस्क्ड वैकल्यकराणि कंपेयर टू द अदर सेट ऑफ Marmas, this is little difficult to by heart, and the mnemonic. If you are good at forming the mnemonics, you can also go with that. But I suggest again, shloka is always better. So rohi takshani jani kurva. So it's easy. You can know this. So vaikalya karas. When you count them, then you will get the number as forty-four. Last is ruja kara marmas. So gulfa udva mani bandha udva dwe dwe kurcha siram shicha. Ruja karani jani yad ashtavetani buddhiman. This is favorite for the examiners to when they ask in vaiva. So vaiva they will ask you uh, ruja kara marmas and vishalegna marmas and exams also lot of times ruja kara marmas has appeared. So they are eight in number. It's also rhythmic. No difficulty in remember. Gulfa udva 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 gulfa mani bandha udva 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 mani bandha dwe dwe kurcha siram shi. Means dwe dwe means two plus two. So makes it four. Isn't it so? Like this, totally it adds up to eight. Okay. So this was about the um, this one. Next, when we talk about Mamsa Marmani, Sira Marmani, these things here also, if you remember the names, it is enough. So usually they will not ask like that. Uh, describe Mamsa Marmas, describes Nayugata Marmas, like that. Usually they will not ask. Okay. So if they ask, usually they will ask the either of this Sadhya Prana Hara, Kalantara, or um, Ruja Kara, or Vaikalya Kara, like this. So if they ask the question from Mamsa structural classification like Mamsa Sirasnayu, what they might ask is so they may ask for example in Mamsa Marma, in MCQs they may give us Talaradaya, Indra Vasti, Guda, Stanarohita. So what I told you just now are the names of Mamsa Marmas. So these are all the so one among them is a Mamsa Marma. So which among them is an example of Mamsa Marma? So Talarudaya they will give and rest they can give any other Marmas. So you have you have to mark for Talarudaya. Okay. So usually this can be expected for MCQs. Okay. So for that sake, at least you have to know this classification. So which is a Mamsa Marma, which is a Snayu Marma, which is a uh, this one, etc. Like that. So what I say is, at least know the important Marmas. Like for example, three Marmas. We have three Marmas: Rudaya, Nabi, Basti. So Rudaya, at least you remember. Rudaya, we know it is Sadhya Prana Hara in the that classification. But when we are coming to structural classification, you have to remember Rudaya Marma comes in the category of Sera Marmas. Okay, so like this, at least pinpointed one you can expect. So Nabi Marma, that is also an example for Sera Marma. Okay, so like this, try to remember important things. Guda Marma, Guda Marma is an example for Mamsa Marma. So like this, you can just highlight in your textbooks which are the important ones. 
so shankha marma you can take shankha marma is an example for again uh, this asthi marmas isn't it so temporal bone we say you know temporal bone structures so there you can remember like that and all those which are coming under the heading of your joints knee joint shoulder and jan purpara simanta dipati gulpa manibandha so with the names itself you can understand that there are the examples for sandhi marmas okay so like this at least remember the important things so that they may ask you in mcqs more about this um, structural classification okay so this is what i wanted to tell in this after this we have anguli pramana classification i think i forgot to show you in the slide that but you uh, can you just put one slide any slide that is having a table any one slide just go to the tables wherever you are finding the tables previous okay like this see where i have shown the table so same table now you keep in mind and just you write the heading as pramana veda now our class our motto is to understand the pramana veda based on the measurement anguli pramana isn't it so what you can do is you can write the heading as pramana veda on the left side and then you can write the angula pramana on the right side so under the heading of pramana veda you write one angula pramana 1 2 3 4 okay and half angula this is what you can write so you can note down if you are there so one angula are totally how many in number 12 in number one angula pramana are 12 in number two angula pramana are six in number three angula pramana are four in number four angula pramana are for swapani tala we also use the word for four angula pramana chatur angula pramana can also be known by the name as swapani tala uh, marma uh, swapani tala angula marma that is size of one's own fist so there are 29 in number okay so so panitala marma there are 29 in number ardhangula are 56 highest is ardhangula marmas okay highest is ardhangula which accounts for 56 i'll just repeat it once you can write the heading as pramana bheda on the left and then you can write how many they are in number so for example if you are writing you know, angula pramana it is 12 one angula 12 are there two angula there are six three angulas there are four four angulas or swapani tala they are 29 ardha angula they are 56 that is the highest again when you count it will come to 107 so like this you can make different uh, varieties of tables for different types of criteria of classification okay and i don't think it is necessary to know which are ardha angula so much uh, in depth for first year should not be asked um okay i if you want i'll give the list of 12 marmas urvi marma kurcha shira vitappa kakshadhara i have the list with me but that much should not be the thing maximum in pramana bheda they have to ask if they ask they can ask the total numbers so ardangula is how many in number and eka uh, sopani talam are how many in number they can ask like that you can expect that in the form of mcqs but definitely all these in the form of tables you have to write if the question comes as classification of marmas so easily you will be forming how many tables five to six tables you will be forming and that is the best way of presentation okay and that list is there even in your textbook so our angula which are the names two angula which are the names etc like that okay so after that Uh, then you remember trimarmas trimarmas is also important so so many times in our old quad uh, pattern question paper it was it was coming for 5 marks so now that you have it in the form of 3 marks certainly you can expect this question for 3 marks also so when you uh, when the you hear the word trimarmas first you have to understand this trimarma is only explained by charakacharya so sushruta has not told about the trimarmas so it is Uh, given in the samhita itself it is given as charakokta trimarma as a charakokta trimarmas only it is told as like that so marmani punaha vasti rudaya murdhadini murdhadini so charaka in the sutrasthana 11 chapter gives this correlation marmani punaha vasti rudaya murdha so these are the three examples of trimarmas so other than this he tells marmani vasti rudaya shirascha ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಭೂತಾನಿ ವದಂತಿ ತಗ್ನಾಹ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಭೂತಾನಿ ವದಂತಿ ತಗ್ನಾಹ ಸೊ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಒಪೈನ್ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ತ್ರಿಮರ್ಮಾಸ್ ವಸ್ತಿ ಹೃದಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಿರ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ತ್ರಿಮರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಅದರ್ ದನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಹೃದಯ ಮೂರ್ನಿ ವಸ್ತೌ ಚೃಣಾಂ ಪ್ರಾಣಾ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಿತ 
ತಸ್ಮಾತ್ ತೇಷಾಂ ಸದಾ ಯತ್ನಂ ಕುರ್ವೀತ ಪರಿಪಾಲನೆ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಮರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಹೌ ದ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಇಸ್ ರಿಸೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಮರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಹೃದಯ ಮೂರ್ನಿ ವಸ್ತು ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಅಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಮರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಋಣಾಂ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಿತ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಮರ್ಮಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಮರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಕೇರ್ಫುಲಿ ಓಕೆ ಸದಾ ಯತ್ನ ಕುರ್ವೀತ ಪರಿಪಾಲನೆ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಪ್ರಿಸರ್ವ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಮರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಫ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎನಿ ಇಂಜುರಿ ಟು ದ ತ್ರೀ ಮರ್ಮಾಸ್ ದೆನ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸದ್ಯೋ ಮರಣ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಓಕೆ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಇನ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಮರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಸೊ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಇಫ್ ದ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ಅಪ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೀವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಕಿಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕಲಿ ವಾಟ್ ದ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇವನ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಕಿಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕಲಿ ಸಪೋಸ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಲ್ ಎ ಕ್ಯೂ ಓಕೆ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಇಸ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗೋ ಆನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬಿಂಗ್ ಈಚ್ ಮರ್ಮ a bit in detail and so now that you have the entire knowledge of the marmas its correlation its type etc things so some points you can explain about the rudaya some points you can explain about the basti some points you can explain about the murdni like that so you can just give a little elaborate each marma so that your explanation gets completed for lq so other than this where all where do you get the word trimarma the word trimarma is also there in the context of dasha pranayatanas okay you have heard the term dasha pranayatanani even in that we get this word okay so dashaiva ayatanam ahu pranah yeshu pratishthitah okay shankhau marmatrayam kantho raktam shukrau jasi gudam so these are the areas means the dasha pranayatanas these are the examples or these are the dasha pranayatanas which you are going to see so for example shankhau okay then the word is marmatrayam okay two shankhau shankhau means two in number marmatrayam again your trimarmas okay other than that kanthau rakta shukra ojasa gudam so when you add all this the number comes to as 10 okay so that means to say these trimarmas are also a part of this dasha pranayatanas even this can be a good point to add on to your the explanation of trimarmas then after that as i said like you go on describing the importance of each marma for example if you are telling about rudaya marma tell like tatra rudaye dasha dhamanya prana apano mano buddhi chetana maha bhutani cha so these are the things that you know about that it contains dasha dhamanis major 10 blood vessels are there prana is there apana vayu is there apana is there manas is there buddhi is there chetana is there maha bhutas are there so so many words you are covering in one marma rudaya marma isn't it so rudaya is the center point for all of these things all of these dashadhamanis prana apana mano buddhi chetana it is the center point for all these things so like this similarly for shiras or murni you can explain as shiraha uttamangam prana prana bhutam yatra shrutah sarvendriyani cha yaduttamangangaanam shiras tadabe diyate so it is described as uh, uttamanga so you can just drag this point and it will complete your explanation in this regard next vad vasti marma so vasti is related with your stula guda mushka sevani shukravah mutravah nadis ambu vah srotas right so these are the words you can use for uh, telling about the importance of vasti marma okay then um, i think this much explanation if you are writing that should be more than enough for the first from the first year perspective because you can write the abhigata lakshanas for each trimarmas but that anyway you will learn in fourth year shalya tantra so not required actually in the first year then there may be one more question that you can expect in mcqs mahamarma okay mahamarma is also like trimarmas mahamarma word is also there told by ashtangakaras okay ashtanga people have told this word as mahamarmas so the uh, which are those mahamarmas murdha jihva bandhanam kantho rudayam nabhi vasti gudah so seven are there so seven murdha is head jihva bandhana is the muscles of the tongue okay kantha is the neck hriday is the heart nabhi is your umbilicus vasti is your bladder urinary bladder guda is your aorectal canal or the aorectal region right so these are the examples for the word as mahamarma remember this word okay so that uh, just remember it uh, always it's good to know uh, new things so ashtanga people explain the word as mahamarma which are seven in number so they may ask you they may give you example which among the following is an example for 
Mahamarma. Okay. Murtha and they will give some other um, uh, options. Or they may give three Murtha Mar Mahamarma's name and they may give some other name. So which among this is not an example for Mahamarma. So however they want, they can twist it and ask it. So just know these names. Okay. So after that, we have the explanation for each marmas and the probable correlation. So probable correlation is not expected as such in the exam. But what is what what I what I feel is so if you have done the dissection thoroughly and if you have seen the structures in the dissection thoroughly, that should actually help help you in writing the probable correlation. So for example, I'll tell you now. So just let us take one small example of Talaradaya marma. Okay, Talarudaya Marma, all of us know it is in the middle portion of our palm. So when we are talking in upper extremity, so we are we are pointing it in the center of our palm. The same Talarudaya Marma is there in the center part of our soul, in the plantar aspect, okay, as well as in the dorsum aspect. So when this automatically comes to your mind, so when you pictureize this in your mind, so automatically you will start remembering what structures will come in this region because now that you have done the dissection and already you know what are the structures coming in this so for example just you write one or two names of the structures that would actually be very good very impressive actually so you can write for examples so for example let's take the talarudaya marma in upper extremity if you are taking in upper extremity then you can tell these uh, uh, superficial palmar arch will come at the center of the palm deep palmar arch also will come there lumbricals okay and then introsi muscles will come there median nerve branches will come there okay what i said you need not remember all these things but at least superficial and deep palmar arch definitely you know this at least you can write that these are the structures which are a part of your talarudaya marma so like that if you remember these so one or two correlations that will also help you to remember that particular site of the marma that is how it is going to help you similarly indra basti marma so indra basti marma is there even in our upper limb as well as in our lower limb so again it is the center of the forearm so center of the forearm in the upper limb center of the uh, leg in the lower limb so what reminds this so forearm muscles you can remember immediately you can try to remember the forearm muscles there what you will remember in lower limb immediately try to remember the calf muscles gastrocnemius is there soleus is there plantaris is there that's all okay so like this when you know these uh, one or two correlations that's very good that you remember the sites of the marmas perfectly so this is what you can write in this way and overall, if they're asking you particularly about any one marma, say, for example, if they're asking you about some kurpara marma, okay, for example, for uh, as a, your SAQ, okay, let's take as kurpara marma, then the order if you're writing like this, so for example, kurpara marma, you write the first heading as sankhya, sankhya, how many kurpara marma, there are two in number, sankhya hyphen two. Sthana. What is the sthana of Korpara Marma? No need of shloka there again. Just you can write it is the center of the elbow joint. Okay, it is the center of elbow joint. Then you go. Sankhya is over. Sthana is over. Next, you can write the heading as Panchavidha classification. Panchavidha classification in the form of Panchavidhas. So those Panchavidha classification can be in the form of Rachana. So Rachana Anusara, it is Sandhi Marma, isn't it? So structurally, it, the Rachana Anusara, it is Sandhi Marma, Parinam Anusara, it is Vaikalya Karamarma. Okay, Parinam Anusara, it is Vaikalya Karamarma. Pramana Anusara is, it is Triangula Pramana, that is three angulis. So, right Pramana, right three angulis. Panchabhuta, which Majjamabhuta is dominant? Jalamhabhuta. Which Shadanga is there? Bahugata. Okay, it is an upper extremity. So that among the Shadangas, it is located in the Bahugata Pradesha. So these headings, when you're writing in this way, you will not miss any of the points there. Okay, so first you write Sankhya, how many? What is the Sthana? Then you write the heading as Panchavidha classification. In that you write Rachana Anusara, Sandhi Marma, Parinama Anusara, what, which Marma? Pramana Anusara, it is how many Angulis? Panchamahabhuta, which is dominant, Shadanga, among the Shadangas, it belongs to which region? Urdhva Chatrugata, I mean not Chatrugata, Urdhva Shakhagata or Bahugata. Okay, that will make your uh, things easier. After this, you can just go for the heading, anatomical structures which are involved in this. So directly you can write the 
elbow joint and then you can write the capsule then you can write uh, ulnar nerve radial all these uh, brachial artery median nerve all these things so so many structures are there supinator muscle is there so many structures are there try to just give one or two examples under the heading of anatomical structures okay and then if you have learned about the injuries then it is uh, it you can write what happens if there is an injury to that but it is definitely not mandatory for the first year you will learn that in detail in the fourth year shalya tantra okay treatment is also not needed so you can stop your answer at this level so sankhya sthana panchavidya classification anatomical structures that are involved this should help you to complete every marma whichever they ask you in the exams so maintain the same pattern so that you will not miss any of the point in this so this was one more thing that i just wanted to give an insight on okay so i think this much is sufficient so there are lot of things if we go on talking there is a uh, lot to talk in this but uh, this should be fine so if you have any questions it's open you can ask me questions i can help you out in clearing the doubts ah uh, thank you very much ma'am uh, ma'am can i uh, stop screen sharing sorry can i stop the screen share ma'am yeah yeah sure sure yes ma'am thank you very much ma'am for beautiful insights regarding mama sharira uh, i request all of our viewers to start posting your questions in the chat box and ma'am will be answering for them ma'am we have our first question ha huh. Ma'am, is it important to write number of each marma or just mention name? Yeah, uh, write a uh, number of each marma. That's what I told. Sankhya. So it's better if you write the number of each marma. Just mentioning the name means name will be given in the question only. You no, know? like if they want to ask you about Janu marma, that itself is the name. Then you can mention the Sankhya as two. It is simple. So you will be knowing about that. i am just telling you to follow the pattern like sankhya sthana like that thank you ma'am the next question is how many diagrams we should draw see here there are very less number of diagrams this is not an organ or anything like that so like you draw for relations one external features one it's nothing like that so you see the question if the question is specific okay urdhva shaka gata marmas if they are asking you then you only show the diagram related with the upper limb so you just take one part of the upper limb any one limb you can take the draw the diagram of a limb and just mark the points marmas which are coming in the upper limb if they ask you prushta gata marmas just only take the prushta gata marmas you can show them so you see the question what respect to specifically they ask you try to show them okay so the entire uh, drawing in the human body and showing all the marmas is re definitely not required until and uh, unless the question is like um, uh, define marma classify marma and etc like uh, for a long question if they are asking then you have to draw those two uh, diagrams anterior view and posterior view thank you ma'am the next question is what can be the possible question and important questions from mama sharir that's what i discussed in the session actually you can just uh, watch my video once again so i have yes. told many questions actually whatever you can get in the mcqs because um, they have given all the components either they can come as mcqs laqs or saqs so specific pinpointed one okay they can ask for mcqs and they can ask sadhya prana har marmas vaikalya kar marmas in specific if they want to ask like that usually that will be asked for saqs if they want to ask in the form of long question they will ask define marma classify marma come write the composition of the marma and then they may ask you at the end describe any one parinama anusara or rachana anusara okay so like this they may ask you any one question like this and mcqs enough i have told in my today's session so what how can they come like that so you can just go through that thank you ma'am uh, the next question is ma'am 
is shloka necessary while writing individual mama ha uh, shloka is necessary for important ones like i told you like trimarmas so that is a specific question so for that if you write the shlokas it is really good that is on and all that are in one line okay so if you are uh, they are asking you about ruja karmarmas it is always better to like the shloka if they are asking you why uh, we can i mean uh, right uh, vishalyagna marvas then again it's better to write the shlokas so you see how they are sadyo pranahara if they are asking always it is better to write the shloka but if you are not good at remembering the shlokas like i told you like you have to make the mnemonics you have to make the mnemonics and then write it remember it but it's little difficult in making the mnemonics for marvas ma'am uh the next question is ma'am how to represent group of mama in table form like the page will be small in answer booklet no you just make the tables no first what you do is <clears throat> so first you write the name uh, so for example we'll take urdhva uh, chaturvata marmas so you just uh, enlist the names of the marmas under the heading of urdhva chaturvata marmas you first you write on the left side names of the marmas <clears throat> next to that you write sankhya okay how many marmas are there on each okay after that you can write the pancha mahabhutas if you are able to remember after that you can write uh, the location of the marmas each marma where it is located after that you can just write uh, the correlation like i told anatomical structure which is involved so that should complete your table that much if you write in a form of a table it's more than enough nothing else will be expected apart from this so one or two anatomical structures you can write at the end any okay, group of marma can be represented in represented in the same way thank you ma'am uh, the next question is ma'am is it enough to write shlokas of one reference or we need to write more references like for nirukti and lakshana ha huh, for the specific type of marmas it's only our sushrutas shlokas what is there in the textbook and he is the only one who has told for that so obviously there you will have only one reference but nirukti uh, when they are asking you in specific then at least uh, you have to write 3 to 4 niruktis okay because they are quite simple jivasthanam to marmasya ओके एंड मरेन्दिति मर्माणी मरण सदृशात गात दुखदायित वातिति मर्मा सो आई डोंट थिंक दे आर सो डिफिकल्ट दैट यू कैन नॉट रिमेंबर सो 3 टू 4 शुड बी फाइन फॉर निरुक्ति व्हेन यू आर आस्किंग अबाउट निरुक्ति सो दैट वन एंड लक्षणस यू कैन जस्ट राइट दोस नेम्स एंड द कंपोजिशन ऑफ द मर्मा दैट इफ यू राइट इट इज इनफ थैंक यू मैम द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज Ma'am, we should write the shloka for Sadhya Prana Marma, or if Marmas mentioned, is it enough? Uh, I think Ma'am is already told. Yeah, if you are able to remember the names, pakka like for Sadhya Prana Hara names, if you are able to remember, just write the Sanskrit names and the numbers in front of it. Uh, if you are good at shlokas, you can do even that. That actually depends on you how you are. But always it is, uh, always it is good to know the shlokas is my view. But if you are nineteen. uh sadhya prana hara narma marmas names if you are remembering so that is also fine that you can represent even like that not a problem thank you ma'am the next question is uh the student is asking the reference of trimarma reference of uh, trimarma 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 is told uh, by charaka acharya charaka okay, has told us charaka chikitsa sthana charaka chikitsa sthana 26th chapter charaka okay, chikitsa 26th chapter it is there then in charaka sutra 11th chapter also it is there okay ma'am why is a navi is considered as trimarma though it's included under dasha prana yata i don't have an answer because what i can say in this regard is there is no reference actual reference of this uh, nabhi as a trimarma 
but certainly it is a uh, sadhyo pranahara marmas i think it's better to read separately so i have an answer if you are asking me in the perspective of sadhyo pranahara and dasha pranayatanas in dasha pranayatanas it is vital even in case of sadhyo pranahara it is vital but um, uh, what i say but we don't have the references in the samhita where it is told as nabhi as the trimarma because nabhi word is not there in the context of trimarma uh, as per sushruta or as per charaka they have replaced it with uh, shiras because it is uttamanga so but certainly in reference to with reference to dasha pranayatanas and satyo pranaharama it is vital yes ma'am thank you ma'am the next question is uh, what is marma exactly a location a point a structure or an organ ma'am varma is a vital point marma is a vital point surrounding the marma sthana you can find the structures surrounded in the form of mamsa sira snayu asti sandhi okay ma'am uh, thank you ma'am the next question is from dhanashree ma'am ma'am please tell clinical importance of marma clinical importance there is a big list actually okay so that's what i told it is shalya visha visha vishaya ardha that is half of the surgery surgical knowledge if you want to perform a surgeries or in surgical field always it is better to know the anguli pramana of the marma as well as the location of the marma one the first thing second thing as i emphasized on marma chikitsa so whenever there is uh, now it, it is blooming now marma chikitsa so you can do this non invasive technique very uh, in a very wonderful way and give results to the patients so if you are knowing the concept of marma perfectly so there is a lot of clinical importance attached in the field of shalya shastra for the marma thank you ma'am uh, the next question is why difference of opinion among acharyas when sharira is same sorry uh, why a difference of opinion among acharyas when sharira is same when sharira is same like what is the question i didn't get this like what do you want to ask in reference to the marma actually here ma'am uh, like different acharyas this different acharyas have opinionated different types of marma number yeah, of marma different types of marma because their perspectives are different see for example if you take in uh, sushruta acharya he is a surgeon okay he is a surgeon so obviously he will think from the surgical perspective and give the enumeration and the names related to that charakacharya is a physician so he will think from that perspective from a physician's perspective okay so depending on their different views they have enlisted the different uh, names and the numbers for it yes ma'am thank you ma'am i think that's um, that will be all from our question and answer session ma'am thank you for answering and interacting with the students and dedicating your time for that ma'am uh, one last uh, thing that we would request from your side is ma'am uh, like um, now i think less than 2 weeks are left for the exam what one yeah. advice you would like to give for the students uh, who are going to write the exam to face it bravely uh, and to not to go under any kind of mental stress ma'am now oh, very good question <laughs> now what i would like to say see be calm be patient don't think that you do not know anything so you have worked hard for one and half years you will be certainly knowing the things so only thing you will be having is i oh, i didn't study that i didn't study that only that one so don't think that and you will be knowing the things so face it aram se there is nothing to worry and uh, don't do night outs and all is what i say sleep by 10 o'clock wake up by 4:30 5 o'clock just brush up the things so you just have to do the revision now you must not read from left hand corner to the right hand corner you just have to brush up the things whatever you have highlighted in the textbook or in your whatever small notes you have made if you are just brushing up that that is more than enough and he will tell that he knows that he has studied that she has studied that don't worry about this don't compare it what you have read it will be the final so stay calm nothing to worry so it will go well so study well means be specific in answering the subject is not tough but certainly it needs repetition otherwise it is a very specific subject okay so 
sleep by 10 wake up by 4:30 that should be and uh, thank you karthik for um, providing this opportunity for the students community for uh, giving some ideas for the appearing their exams and also the members of jignasa karnataka who have organized this session very it's a very good idea since these children are facing the first years in a different format this is a kind of assisting them or helping from our end from different professors who are there in this ayur anatomy platform and let this continue is what i wish and any students you want help at any time we are open for that you can ask freely whatever doubt you have within your mind thank you once again thank you ma'am and uh, that's actually a very beautiful advice from you and uh, compliment from you ma'am uh, you are very happy to hear that uh, the, uh, when uh, we were studying anatomy ma'am um, like we had confusion in certain topics we had the best teachers to guide us and everything uh but uh when in our account to our instagram account we received many messages like in certain messages they are not able to uh, get uh, like proper guidance for the exam they are not able to uh, face it they are, they were under fear that uh, of the exam uh, they were confused like uh, this was a new scheme there were lot many confusions ma'am and there was no such one single platform where uh every topic is dealt clearly uh, like uh, the session uh, like topics and anatomy are scattered throughout the uh, youtube uh, like every channel will upload two or three videos and then they will not upload them so we thought of making a proper singular playlist that would help for the students and uh, clear all their doubts in, in particular topics like in uh, uh, like getting how many questions will be coming from each topic um yeah how many saqs how many laqs how many mcqs and how to deal with the pressure of the exam how to deal with the pressure of the new scheme so there's a whole team uh, despite our academic schedule we are trying our best to help uh, our juniors be it, uh, anatomy series lecture series or be it the note series we have written all the notes for the first year students um but, uh, like we have done it by handwritten notes only we haven't copied anywhere from google ma'am or from any pdf or ppts we prepared everything by referring uh, 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 classical references and textbooks uh, we prepared charts flow charts and everything that would be useful for the students uh, like what we didn't add uh, like a proper uh, thing uh, we try we are trying our best to give it uh to our juniors ma'am so thank you so much for agreeing on our first approach itself and uh contributing uh for the uh, welfare of the students uh that's what we as genius are trying to do ma'am to make a change and to be Doing the best to support job. and to be the yeah. best support for thai students ma'am like there's numerous councils for allopathy students today there's uh, indian medical association there's so many such ngos uh on pharma companies who st uh, who stand behind their back uh, but there's no such organization um for high students that's uh, that's the need of uh, starting the jignas and its activities uh, to support and be the backbone that i students really need in this modern world today so thank you really from all of my team members uh, for joining us today ma'am really thank you so much thank you so much thank you once again Ma'am, I request your uh, permission to end the session, ma'am. Yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you, viewers, for joining us today. Uh, there will be another session on neuron uh, nervous system at uh, 7 p.m. today. Kindly join us again. Take a break for 15 minutes. We'll be starting in from 7:15 or 7:20. Thank you.